Ilse, can you tell us just quickly what you do here in Stellenbosch? I run the postgraduate programs in translation studies and they consist of a postgrad diploma, which is one year, very practically orientated. So mm -hmm. Students just learn to translate and edit. Editing is always part 50-50, translation 50% editing, very practical. Um, and then students also have uh, an option to go for interpreting instead of the translation. This is, sorry, this is undergrad, postgrad? Undergrad. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, postgrad. Every okay. All our translation okay. programs are postgrad. Good. Okay. So we don't do any language training mm -hmm. or teaching or whatsoever. No linguistics, no grammar, nothing. It's just translation or interpreting. And then the editing is always part of it. Uh, editing? Is this editing of translations? Or no, no, no. Trans editing of translations also, mm -hmm. but not only translated editing, but editing in general, copy okay. editing mostly. Good. Okay, so that's the one program, is a postgrad diploma, one year. And then we have a two year master's program, of which the first year consists of course components, the second year consists of a full thesis, about 130 pages. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's two years. And um, obviously the masters then could lead to a PhD okay. if you want to do it. And okay. then the PhD is also offered. So I coordinate the whole program. We're in a, in a department of Afrikaans and Dutch. And Dutch, here. yeah. Does that mean that the translation is between Afrikaans, Dutch and, no, no, and English? No, 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 not at all. Um, it's just administratively situated within the department of Afrikaans and Dutch. Um, all the language departments are part of this translation component. Okay. So we do offer Afrikaans English, all the African languages, and then European languages are, sp uh, not Spanish, because I'm looking up you, I'm thinking of Spain, um, are German, French, Dutch, obviously, and then we also do, we also offer Mandarin. Really? So it's getting quite complex? Very complex, okay. a lot of organization. You're also running a summer school here. Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, it's the second year that South Africa is running a summer school, and it's the first time that we do it now. It's uh, the University of the Free State. We did that last year for the first time um, in 29, and now at Stellenbosch. Um, it's contextual. Our main aim is to show African students you know, what translation studies could bring to them as a research opportunity, mm -hmm. as an extra on their language plate. Um, so, and next year, hopefully, we will be able to, to, to host, to get it hosted somewhere out of South Africa. Okay. We're thinking of Mali. Mm -hmm. um, we have an offer for 2012 at the uh, American University in Egypt. Cairo, yes. In in Cairo. Well, okay, so it's really a Pan African. It really enterprise. is Pan African. Oh. Uh, we would have loved to only keep it at one place, like in Leuven now, mm -hmm. etc. But because Africa is such a large continent, it's just not like mm -hmm. Europe, you know, where you could get on a train or a plane and within an hour or two you are where you want to be. You know, it, it would be very selfish only to keep it in South Africa. I see the, a lot of emphasis on African translation studies. Do you think in general that you need a different kind of research training for the African no, context? No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> but my, <laughs> <laughs> my uh, colleague, Professor or Dr. Corbus Murray of the Free mm -hmm. Study, does think that we need other research done in, yeah. in Africa. I think we could have the same type of research, but obviously we have specific African problems. Mm -hmm. So that's my take on it. Okay. So it's not just a matter of geographical proximity? No. Uh, no, there, no. There, there is a, an agenda there yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Tell us what you were doing when you were 22, 23 or so. Mm, okay, jeez, can I remember? Um, <laughs> it can't be that long ago. That's very Come long on. ago. <laughs> At that time, I was busy with my PhD. Yeah. And, which was on what? Uh, which was on Afrikaans syntax. Okay. I come from a pure linguistic mm. background. Um, and my topic was, uh, what was it? Uh, I have to translate it quickly. It was on sentence order in Afrikaans, you know, mm -hmm. verb, subject, object, mm -hmm. that type of V is O or 
SVX, whatever the case might be. Um, yeah, so I worked for years only as an Afrikaans, only in Afrikaans as an Afrikaans linguist. And where were you? Uh, here at Stellenbosch. I was born and bred and everything here. Total incestuous relationship so, so with your, the your, your first language is absolutely Afrikaans? Yes, yes, yes. Um, and then in 1996, uh, I was offered to take over this translation program. I taught a little translation in, you know, as part of our undergrad studies in Afrikaans, only between Afrikaans and English. And at that stage in 1996, we only had the postgrad diploma and only two languages were offered. Afrikaans and English. English. Even in 1996, could okay. you imagine that, without any African languages added. So the first thing that I did was from 1997, where we brought in the African languages, at least. Is that part of the post-apartheid apartheid process? No, I don't think, I think the person who, who ran it before me was quite content with, with keeping it small, with mm -hmm. only dealing with Afrikaans and, and English. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and African languages sort of said we didn't have the capacity to teach at your program as well. So I actually had to go out and look for people teaching, but it went so well and we, we, you know, we attracted so many students that the Department of African, African Languages today is fully bought, has fully bought into our program now. Okay. So we work very closely with them. Students come to Stellenbosch to do this. Yes. So, so you're, yes. you're not. It's not your local African speaking population no, at no, all. No. No. How many students would you have? Uh, for translation, for translation yes. only. We deliberately keep the the numbers small so mm -hmm. that we don't overstock the market. Okay. Um, but let's uh, for this year we've had fifteen for the diploma, and twelve for the masters. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, I have ten PhD students. What about translator training in South Africa as such? You, you, it, it seems to be quite well developed. In, at universities, yes. Yeah. Um, well, in the Western Cape, we have three universities, UCT, University of Cape Town, University of the Western Cape, and then University of Stellenbosch, and we are the only ones here in this mm -hmm. area. But throughout South Africa, at least in one province, you will have excellent translator training, like University of the Free State, mm -hmm. Gauteng is, you know, University of Johannesburg, UNISA, University of the Witwatersrand, KwaZulu Natal, University of Durban, University of Port Elizabeth, uh, no, it's now called Nelson Mandela Metropolitan mm -hmm. University, they teach translation. So, is this a develop a post-apartheid development related to language needs? I think so. Yeah. Yes, yes, I think so. We've had it since 1980, 80. So okay. you know, this yeah. very well established at Stellenbosch. But the Free State, you know, especially when the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, when that was held, uh, the need for interpreters started, and so the University of the Free State then sort of started their program, and they've built it. Up. That was in 1990, from 1992 onwards, and in this period they have developed quite large uh, departments. South Africa has how many official languages? Eleven. Is that working? No, it's not. In practice, no. uh, it does not work at all. Uh, we English is the lingua franca, unfortunately. You know, we How thought, does translation relate to that then? We yeah. thought translation would boom, mm -hmm. you know, after 94, and it, it, it actually didn't. But it, you've got these training programs. We've that come got, on, so there we must have be the something. training programs, and many provinces, like in the Western Cape, we have a language uh, print, uh, policy, you know, which says everything has to be in three languages. And all written documents are presented in the three languages, or are provided in the three languages. Mm -hmm. But in practice, if you want to get help at a state department, at a national department, you will only be helped in English. If you ask for Even Afrikaans tongue, is not Even Afrikaans. Afrikaans. They will just, we don't speak Afrikaans, we don't have people to help you in Afrikaans. Now, Afrikaans is not the problem, but the African languages mm -hmm. are more of a problem because most Afrikaans-speaking people's English are fairly good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the rural people, they, they really have problems. 
you think it was too ambitious to go for 11 official languages? I think so. It was too ambitious. It, it does not work, you know. It's even and with time, I mean. Even with time, it, it, it gets worse because now the African speakers want their children to be educated in English because they see they can do nothing without English. So they okay. take a decision to, you know, to only speak English to their ch children in home, at home. So you think the long-term result of this policy might paradoxically be a monolingual country? In a monolingual English country regarding the higher functions, Okay. which is a tragedy. Instead of, you know, standardizing, pulling up the African languages to the level of at least where Afrikaans is, mm. you know, it, it it actually... What has to be done then? It's I mean, is translation the solution or is it more than a translation? No, problem? it's much more that, yeah. than a translation. It's a, it's a language planning, you know, project that mm. needs some a lot of money and a lot of willpower. And the government doesn't want to do it. You know, they don't see the need for it because the elitist black people are all fluent enough in English. English. What sort of research is needed then? I mean, it, you have very specific problems, yeah. or problems that are more acute here than in other parts yeah, of the world yeah, perhaps. Yeah. The How can research help with that? The type of research that I would love to see here being done more is localization. You know, banking oh. machines, telephones, computers, and not only in the, it, it's getting done now in the larger African languages like Zulu, Iskosa, but the smaller Setswana, Venda, Isindebele, you know, they are still lacking these skills. So, so localization, I, I would love to have some research done on Okay, that. can research help get that done? I think that? so. Okay. I think so. But what about liter? I mean, your background is in literary work. No, on, or in linguistics. Linguistics. Oh, sorry, I'm no, linguistics. You, you and paradoxically, uh, most of my students now only want to work in in literary translation. Right, yes. So most of my PhD topics are literary. You know, lit the translation of literary works. So you're not happy with that direction? Well, I'm, you I'm happy them with it. I can't. Do, I can't discourage the students to do something else. You sure. know, I. You know, in South Africa, we don't have the luxury of specializing if you teach translation. You have to know about everything, you know, it's, it's sort of... I think that's pretty general. Is it? <laughs> I think so, yes. I find it a it's little It's one of the attractions of the job. Yeah, it's, and it's very interdisciplinary, as you know. So, mm. usually, I, most of the time, I have a co-supervisor, mm. you know, I... For the uh, doctoral thesis? Yeah, yes, for the doctoral uh, uh, thesis. So um, how would that work? It works to a certain extent, but, but, but sometimes... But you have two supervisors you, doing different you, aspects of it? Or? Yeah, yeah. You know, so let's say I have someone working, or a supervisor knowing the other language, because I now have this Chinese student, Fang Lei, whom you've mm. met, um, and I have no Mandarin, so I need to have someone just to, you know, to check the, whatever he's writing about Mandarin, that it's okay. Uh, same goes for French, you know, I have a little reading knowledge of French, but I have two, three students working with French texts. So the, the co-supervisor usually also comes in from Good. the other language. Yeah. Good, so we can manage the so, language. Yeah, 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 yeah. But sometimes, you know, if the co-supervisor is a literary scholar in literary studies, they, it's very difficult to get you know, the mind switch that now it is a translation perspective. You know, so sometimes there's a sort of pulling in both directions and the poor student in the middle, and then I just say, this is a PhD in translation studies, so let's right. get back to translation. Do you see that the summer school has much effect on the young researchers? Does it's it it's early days now. Mm -hmm. um, nothing happened from last year, you know, we didn't actually get new students from there or, you know, the students mm -hmm. who attended were already enrolled. Mm -hmm. um, but I hope... But it, in terms of their research orientations and perspectives? I, yeah. I, not from last year's, but I hope from this year okay. onwards, because the tutorial system that we had last year didn't work. 
you know, it was this group set up mm -hmm. and one student would, you know, only one student's project was discussed, okay. for instance. One student took over the whole session of an hour, hour and a half, and so mm -hmm. the, the other students didn't get, you know, or... or then that now you have individual And tutorials. now we have individual sessions mm -hmm. and hopefully something might get out of there, you know, where they could get contact with a, with a, a, a lecturer, you know, whom they could perhaps email afterwards if the session was too short. So I'm hoping that this might work a little better. Good.